umbilical cord problems in newborns are really common. Today I'm going to take you through the three most common cord problems and importantly when you need to worry about them. And these are a gunky cord, a pink or sometimes bleeding cord and a sticky out cord stump. So remember, when a newborn baby's born, they look something like this, with a beautiful, juicy cord. Before the cord's cut, it's going to be clamped. So when you see a baby in the first couple of days of life, they'll look something like this, with a nice squishy cord, but with a clip on it. Now, over the next seven to 10 days, what's going to happen is that cord is going to dry up, it's going to shrivel up just like this, and then it's going to drop off. And that process of it drying up is where the first common cord problem comes in. And that is a gunky cord. And this is a classic example of what we often see. And parents and healthcare professionals are worried about this because they worry that the cord itself is infected. Now, gunky cords are really common. And remember that this is a bit of flesh that is drying up, rotting and falling off the body. So it's going to be a bit smelly, it's going to be a, a bit gunky and that's probably normal. Mostly they just need a gentle clean with some water and gauze. The reason that we know that this one is going to be okay is because the skin under it looks normal. So that's a really good sign. When do we worry? Well, we worry when the skin is looking red or inflamed because that does suggest an inf spreading infection which is called omphalitis. Here's a great example. This is a cord that's fallen off, but there's a bit left, it's a bit ulcerated, and there's redness of the skin. Now, remember that redness can be more difficult to see in darker skin tones, so bear this in mind. And if you want to see a broad range of rashes and skin problems on children with a variety of skin tones, then check out dftbskindeep.com. Here's a more obvious example because it's on lighter skin and you can see clearly there's spreading redness. So this is when you need to worry because this is an infection and these babies will likely need to come into hospital and need some intravenous antibiotics. Now, the second common cord problem is this. This is an umbilical granuloma. It's when the cord falls off but it leaves a bit of tissue behind. It's normally less than a centimetre and that is, looks pink, raw, moist, and sometimes it can be a bit wet. It's really common that that rubs against the nappy and that can cause a bit of bleeding. Some umbilical granulomas will go away themselves. Others need some treatment with some silver nitrate and table salt also works as a treatment. Here's a great example of the progression and improvement with table salt for an umbilical granuloma and I'll post a link for how to do this in the notes under the video. So when do you need to worry about these? Well, you need to worry when you think it's a granuloma, but actually it's something else. This is a vitellointestinal duct. Duct remnants is when the duct remains after fetal development. So there's a communication between the outside and the inside of the body. And this is a problem. And it can be tricky to identify because often they look like a granuloma and they're treated like a granuloma. We know that it's a duct remnant when either it looks a bit different from a normal granuloma or it doesn't respond to treatment like a normal granuloma, but certainly if there's stuff leaking out of it like urine or serous fluid, think could this be a duct remnant? And these babies, they need an ultrasound scan and they'll need referral to surgeons. And the third common cord problem is this, an outie. It's an umbilical hernia. They're really common. They don't normally cause any problems. They can look a lot bigger when the baby cries, but they shouldn't cause the baby any problems. It's rare that they become incarcerated. But if the baby's getting any pain from the hernia, then you should worry and you should ask the surgeons to take a look. Now, most of these will close themselves without any surgery, but if the hernia is still there by the age of four or five, then the surgeons will think about closing them then. And remember, the size of the bulge isn't what matters, it's the size of the defect. So you could have a really big bulge, but a really small defect in the abdominal wall, and it may close spontaneously. So there are your three most common cord problems and when you need to worry about them. So a gunky cord, you need to worry when the skin underneath is red, and that's omphalitis. 
a pink or bleeding co- or a bleeding cord stump is normally an umbilical granuloma. But think, could it be a duct remnant if there's oozing out of urine or fluid or if it's not responding as a granuloma would? And an umbilical hernia, really common, should resolve. If it doesn't resolve by four or five, then the surgeons might need to do an operation. And certainly if it's causing any pain, then it needs to have a medical review and likely a surgical referral. Mm-hmm.